everybody. It's April Perry and Jonathan Baylor back with another episode of The Sane Show. How are you doing today, Jonathan? I'm good, April. I'm happy that we're recording another show because if you're listening to this show, that means you didn't stop listening to The Sane Show after hearing last week's episode. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hopefully we didn't. We talked about pregnancy last week and every time we talk about pregnancy, I get incredibly scared because <laughs> I can't get pregnant. So I don't like talking about things that I can't experience per se. You did a great job last week. And if you haven't yet listened to this episode and you are either pregnant or nursing or plan to be at some point, <laughs> go listen. But and please listen to it all the way through because all like if you just like get all the way through it. Because if I offend you at some point, I promise I'll recover myself by the end. As a woman who's been pregnant six times, had four children, he did an awesome job. So great work, Jonathan. And now we're ready to dive into some more mailbag questions. And the reason why I love doing these mailbags and I love just asking these questions is because I feel like what we're doing is not just taking kind of some random facts and then just throwing them out at people, but we're actually discussing the same principles of sane in a variety of situations. And the more people listen to the show, you start to be able to guess and know how Jonathan's going to answer the questions because it starts becoming just, oh, I get it. We actually talked about this principle before, or, oh, I do understand how important vegetables are or whatever, but it's a lot of the same principles. It's just that we need a little bit of help sometimes because what we're learning through saying is so much different than what we're learning from society. Would you agree? Well, that's you hit the nail on the head there because even like some of the mindset stuff, one of the things we talked about last in the last episode that I really liked is we talked about, you know, I, I some people, some they have the idea like, oh, I know saying isn't about weight loss, it's about health, which indicates a mindset of like, there are such thing as like the anti cancer diet or or the type of diet that targets specifically belly fat or the type of diet that specifically targets X. And that's a mindset that has yeah. been built over the last 40 years by the pharmaceutical industry, right? Where there is like a specific yeah. cause and a specific solution. Whereas the more we learn about medicine and the more we learn about biology, that's not the way things work. It's very holistic and it's very interconnected. So reprogramming our minds in that way is, is super, super powerful. All right. So on that note, let's go ahead and jump into question number one, which is about sane supplements. So here's the question. It says, I'm curious, is a vitamin or any kind of supplement necessary if you're eating sane? If so, what? And again, if you do have maybe a nursing child, does that change it? And I'm so glad this question was asked because I have a whole bunch of like prenatal vitamins. And while I'm not needing them for pregnancy, I'm wondering, I'm wondering should, I, should I be taking a daily vitamin every day? Is there something I'm missing if I'm eating 15 servings of vegetables a day and eating sanely? So what do you suggest? Do you take a supplement? I think that we need to really keep in mind that our food supply nowadays is very different than what it was 40 years ago, even more different than it was 100 years ago, right? I, you, most people who are listening to this probably have heard about <clears throat> the industrial food complex or industrial farming or mono crops or just the way we produce food nowadays yeah. is way, way different than what our what our grandmothers were exposed to or even people get in arguments about like wheat and grain and those are some of the most conspicuous examples where like when we say wheat and then someone's like in the bible when they say wheat like they're not those are two chromosomally totally different it's like one is a tire and the other is a pencil they're totally different things so how does this relate the way this relates is give the reality especially in america is that even the the healthiest most nutrient dense um diet unless you are living on a farm is going to be less nutrient dense significantly than that same exact way of eating 40 years ago Bad. and like there's pollution there's blah 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 the reason I say this is not because like, oh, we're, we're all doomed <laughs> is more because two things. One is it's very, very difficult to get enough variety in your diet to cover all your vitamin, mineral, amino acids, fatty acids, bases consistently. And that doesn't mean you're going to get sick. It doesn't mean you're going to die. It just might mean you live your life with a vitamin or mineral deficiency that you never realized you had and may like be the reason you get headaches all the time. I don't know. 
So the point is, is that one, it's very hard to get nutrients in general from the modern food supply. And two, it's hard to get a variety of the complete spectrum. So I think that well, one, uh, over-the-counter cheap multivitamins, there's been a lot of research done on them. It's questionable whether or not your body does anything with oh. the vitamins because they're synthetic okay. and they're in unnatural doses in unnatural contexts. However, there are like super foods that are so nutrient dense that we almost need to treat them as supplements. Cod liver oil is an example. Is cod liver oil a supplement? It's an oil, right? Like is, is spirulina a supplement? It's a plant. I don't know, but mm -hmm. most people like, do we call it a supplement? So I personally am not a huge fan of multivitamins. I'm a huge fan of superfoods, which are so nutrient dense and that are cultivated in supernatural environments that they they serve like natural vitamin pills okay but you're speaking another language right now so we need to we need to step back this may need to be the whole episode because i feel like i have a lot to learn when you start talking about spirulina and cod liver oil i'm thinking so i just go to the store and i buy those what else do i need to buy and then how do i incorporate those into what i'm eating is that and i start feeling kind of stressed so help me out here Sure. Well, the good news is one, uh, if you take nothing else away, spending $10 on a bottle of Centrum Silver may not be doing anything for you. So okay. that's, it's, it's not that simple. Uh, in terms of synthetic vitamins, synthetic vitamins and minerals are not the same as vitamins and minerals found in the context of food. They're treated totally differently. If you eat an orange that has 30 milligrams of ascorbic acid in it naturally, ascorbic acid is the name of vitamin C versus if you just take a vitamin C pill and you measure what happens in your body, they are completely different. So when we think in terms of like taking vitamin pills or taking individualized vitamins, that form of thinking is called reductionism. And it, it looks at individualized components of nutrition and that's not how nutrition works. Like here's just one example. There are some of the way vitamins and minerals work is like this, this mineral doesn't work unless this other mineral is present. So they both have oh, to be okay. there to do okay. their thing. And, and there's also like some vitamins and minerals share receptors, meaning that if you were to take a bunch of one, you'd block the absorption of the other one. Okay. So, so, so this turns into like, oh my God, it's so complicated. Well, no, the answer is if the more you can focus on eating food found in its natural state, the healthier you will be. So no, you don't have to go buy cod liver oil and buy chlorella and buy spirulina. Like there are things you could do to turbocharge your health. But the net takeaway is I'm curious. The question was, are vitamin and kind of supplement necessary if you're eating sane? I, are they necessary? I would say take all the effort and all the time you would spend thinking about supplements and spend them on maybe a little bit more time at the farmer's market or maybe with getting the organic produce rather than the conventional produce. Like if you want to supercharge or okay. supplement your health, spend it trying to turn back the clock on the way and source of food we got 50 years ago than on saying, I'm going to put these pills in my body to make up for what's gone on in the external world. Okay, good job. Sane blood. That's our next question. Has Jonathan produced anything about how to read blood work? I had blood tests two years ago, just got them done again. Doctor tells me it all looks good, but I'm curious to know if anything has improved from my sane eating. So you look through these categories in your blood work. I have no idea. No one ever tells you how to read it. Doctor just gives you a thumbs up. You're on your way. So anything we should be looking for or is there anything resource online we could utilize to learn how this is going to affect us blood work or understanding having it <clears throat> excuse me a general understanding of what the numbers means can be very helpful i would strongly just recommend maybe sitting down with it and just using google and like if you want to type in the various thing i mean you'll quickly get some sort of wikipedia ar article which says the healthy range the bad range and just look at a few different sources because like cholesterol is a great example the sort of high total cholesterol you know that's gonna there's gonna be 15 blog articles that tell you one thing about that and 15 blog articles that tell you another thing about that but mm -hmm. for the things that really matter like particle size a1c levels triglycerides 
VLDL, cholesterol, those types of things, those there's pretty well universal agreement on those. So just look at a couple different sources and just use Google as your best friend. Okay, I like that idea because I don't hang out looking at blood work ever. <laughs> I think that's really helpful. It's like you want to be able to see how is how are things changing? How am I getting better? All right, last question. Saying calories. I track my food in my fitness pal because I have food issues. It helps me be accountable. So even though in a sane lifestyle we don't, you know, have to track your calories, this individual does. And also make sure I don't go into starvation mode. I'm eating green smoothies for breakfast, having salads with protein for lunch and dinner, veggies as snacks. And yet each day I've come in around 900 calories. I know saying isn't about calories, but surely this is too low, right? Most doctors don't recommend going under 1300 even when, quote, dieting. She just can't figure it out, wants to know what am I doing wrong? Do I need more vegetables? I could add in some seeds. I'm allergic to nuts. Okay, there you go, Jonathan. So the, the key metric is how are you feeling and how are your results? Because if you're, for example, not tired and you are feeling great and you're functioning great and you have something is different about your body. I mean, if you're, if you're feeling great and you're functioning great on 900 calories and you're 100 pounds overweight, I can tell you exactly what's happening. What's happening is you're experiencing what's called a spontaneous reduction of caloric intake, which means that while it seems like you're only eating 900 calories, what's really happening is 900 calories are passing through your lips while an additional 1000 are coming off your hips because your body has oh, regained its ability to burn it. calories that are already in it. Now, if you were already at a normal or let's say a healthy body weight, and you were only eating 900 calories, and you were weight stable, that would be interesting. Um, okay. <laughs> but uh, you know, there are, and there's older people, for example, who are very small, very inactive, who probably only eat 900 calories, but you'd really need to look at the results you're getting. And if you're not losing weight, I don't know if you would need to feel bad about what's taking place. All right. Now, here's a question on that, because it sounds like she's not eating a lot of whole food fats. I'm seeing a lot of vegetables and protein, but not whole food fats. So is that if we're in a fat burning mode, is it okay just not to even add in any of the fats? It's very difficult to not eat fat. What I mean by that is, so yeah, if all you ate were vegetables, you you wouldn't be taken in fat. But in let meat and fish and and dairy all have fat in them it's it's almost i mean that's why the that's why the remaining four anti-fat fanatics in the world <laughs> you know they're they're oftentimes they're like don't ever eat meat ah meat will kill you the reason they're saying that is not because meat will kill you it's because meat often comes with some fat and they're okay. they think fat will kill you so it's it's very difficult in like the leanest protein in the world, like is like maybe tuna fish, because tuna fish is like almost ninety percent protein. But like even tuna fish has tr has omega three fats in it, so it's got those essential fats in there for you. So okay. put it this way: if you're eating uh, humanely provided seafood and meat, it's nearly impossible not to be getting the essential levels of fat that you need to be healthy. All right, so should this person who's only eating 900 calories a day have any concern that her body is going into start starvation mode or anything like that? If she's eating the you know optimal 10 plus servings of non-starchy vegetables, she's getting her protein in, which has some fat, and she feels really good, and she's getting results, should she, should she be thinking, oh, I should add in a few more calories? Is there the, any need for that? The, the th words you said that matter so much are, and she's feeling good. Starvation mode feels like garbage. So okay. you will, there will never be any question whether or not you're in starvation mode. Think about okay. the last time you dieted and you were cold, tired, hungry, crabby, lost your sex drive, couldn't think. That's your body saying, oh my gosh, what are you doing to me? I'm going to shut down. So if she's mm. not feeling that way, she's not in starvation mode. I love your answer. That's fantastic. Okay. Hey, one for four so far. I was going to say, I've had two other answers too, but I think that that's a really good one. I think that's super helpful. And I will just say, I had one day, I think it was two weeks ago, when I, for some reason, I, I, I decided to run errands, three errands at dinner time with my kids without eating. 
I was the meanest person. Like you would not have even recognized me. I was so mean. And I thought, oh, this was what it was like when I was dieting. I hadn't had that experience for a long time. I was super mean. Anyway, I'm feeling much better now that I'm eating my And April, can I say one? Because I, I felt a little bad on the sort of non-answer I gave earlier about the, the exercise and some of the supplement stuff. So let me let me just give one little bit of info on that. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So one of the reasons I think this question turned out really, really well is because it was a very specific question about a specific situation for a specific person. And that matters a lot because if I have, imagine someone wrote in a question which said, I'm going somewhere, what's the best outfit for me to wear? <laughs> and we didn't know if it was a man or a woman, we didn't know where they were going. going, we didn't know, we know anything about that, right? No, their so, preferences. But that is the expectation we have. Like we expect that we can go yeah. up to a random fit person at the gym and be like, <laughs> What do you eat? Well, I'll do that too. But if you do that for any other context in your life, you know it won't work out. You know it has to be specific to you. Yeah. It has to be something we think through on an individualized basis. And so just like I could never tell anonymous person what's the right outfit to wear in mystery event you're going to, and I would, but, and, and acknowledge that there are people on the internet that will answer those questions. And so run right. the other direction because that's crazy. That's nonsense. And that's why this seems so confusing because you have a bunch of goofballs giving uneducated random recommendations that just confuse yeah. you. Yes. Okay, I think that, that that redeemed you for those other questions. No, I'm just kidding. You did a great job. I think that's fantastic. And uh, I think, well, okay, what would you say for a next action? We've kind of gone <laughs> over a whole lot of different things here. So as a next action, I would just, if if you, here's a, here's a way to detect whether or not you should listen to wellness advice. If the wellness advice is presented by someone who has like no understanding of your if they give you very specific recommendation without any without a very specific understanding of your situation run the other direction because just like you wouldn't like if a doctor is going to diagnose you with a medication they're going to diagnose you specifically after talking with you about that specific yeah. condition for quite some time you're not just gonna be like doc i feel bad what medication should i take and the doctor over the internet says here's a prescription don't fall victim to that with all the snake oil sales nonsense that's going going on in your grocery store shelves and that's going on on the internet. Protect yeah. yourself from that nonsense. Love it. All right, everybody. Do what Jonathan just said. Enjoy this process. We are so glad that you are here. Thank you so much. Please take care of yourself and remember to stay sane.